Welcome to the University of Illinois Food Science Pilot Plant, where today we're using this extruder to try and make the world's longest cheese puff. This is going to take a while, so in the meantime, Nick and Todd are going to give you a little background on how cheese puffs are made. Cheese puffs are part of a larger category called extruded food products. Now, extrusion is a process where ingredients are forced through a very small hole called a die, shown here. Now, extrusion has been used in the snack industry since about the 1930s, and it's responsible for everything from cheese puffs, breakfast cereals, and pastas, to pet food. Gross. Beautiful, isn't it? Extrusion machines, or extruders, come in a variety of different shapes and sizes, from large-scale twin screw varieties to this small-scale model here. Now, most extruders have five basic parts. You have the hopper up here, controls the ingredients, the feeding mechanism that doses out the correct amount, the screw, which mixes, grinds, and cooks the ingredients, and the die, which builds up pressure and forms it into the shape that you want. Today, we're using the circular, but there's a massive quantity of different varieties you can use. The last thing is these knives. As you can see on the right, they're spinning. They cut it off to the correct length. But today, for our world record attempt, we have the knives turned off. Speaking of which, let's go check in with Brian. That looks like it could take a little while. How about a little science snack on first? Extrusion is made possible by a few basic scientific principles. The first of which is pressure which Todd will now demonstrate using a can of extrusion cola. Real high pressure job you got there, Todd. So, as the ingredients proceed down the screw, space gets tighter, causing pressure to build. And with this pressure comes heat, which Todd will now demonstrate using a thermometer. And a blowtorch. This heat gelatinizes the starch, causing a semi-liquid paste that proceeds down the screw and out the dye. Once leaving the dye, the water inside the paste turns to vapor, causing a foam, which Todd will now demonstrate using this can of expanding foam. So as this foam cools, it becomes hard and crispy, like the cheese puffs you know. Now put all this together with a little bit of cheese powder, and you have everything you need to make the world's longest cheese puff, much like the one we're making today. Speaking of which, let's check back in with Brian. Well, as you can see, we made a 102 foot long cheese puff in just under five minutes. Join us next time to learn more about the fascinating world of food science. For now though, I just need to find some cheese powder.